Yo, what it is, YouTube? It's your boy Nitsy coming back with another Bulls. I have a video here today on the channel. I wanted to talk about the weekend. You know, I feel like the weekend is somebody who is a very interesting character. You know, he's somebody who kind of like pushed the boundaries of R&B and everything like that. So let's go ahead and jump into his vocal chain and talk about how I would personally build a vocal chain for him. So if you guys do have any more suggestions for any different type of, you know, vocal chains that y'all want to see, drop it down below. With this one specifically, I'm going to do a little something different. Different. I'm gonna build the UAD vocal chain and I'm gonna also give y'all the free preset down below so y'all could you know use it in case you do have an Apollo interface. So let's jump into it right away. I think the weekend is a very interesting character in R and B game. You know, I feel like he he kind of was the first one to really push the boundaries because before that R and B was really kind of like major chords, you know, a lot of bright lyrics and stuff like that, you know, always about happiness. But he kind of brought in the dark vibe, the more you know, grungy, the more atmospheric the more omnisphere type of you know dark uh visuals so that's what i kind of like about the weekend a lot and a, a person he was influenced a, a lot by is michael jackson i see sometimes he liked to use like a sure um, microphone but he also liked to use a neumann microphone this looks like a u67 so here you know the u67 is a tube microphone and you know uh, a lot of the times with these tube microphones you actually kind of have to wait a little bit for them to um heat up so that you can actually get the full sound the full coloration of the tube sound so that's something that a lot of people don't talk about they want to pedal microphones and say yeah i get a, a c800 but you have to understand that usually when you have a tube microphone that you have to let it get hot for about like 30 minutes to an hour or even if you have like other pieces of equipment like analog gear so that you know the tube can get nice and hot so you can get that warm um kind of sound so the u67 is very good i like how the weekend he's very dynamic with his voice sometimes he can start singing like very you know quiet very quiet very soft and slow but then he can get really aggressive and loud and that's what i like about his vocals here he's one of those people that really got very aggressive with his vocals michael jackson was kind of like that too but the weekend did it in a way where it was very dark and aggressive especially with the u67 usually you know it comes with a cloud lifter because it, re it requires a lot of gain a lot of power to get that tube nice and hot so you can get that warm sound but you know a part of that warming effect is definitely the smooth high end you know when somebody's singing you don't ever want it to be too brash and too fatiguing to the ears that's something you always got to consider with um you know kind of the microphone that you're selecting you know does it make the vocal come off in a very pleasant way and the vocalist you know depending on how aggressive they are in their lyrics what they're saying you might want to uh, pick a microphone that's going to fit that so also the u67 is incredible because it gives a lot of presence and we know with the weekend like his voice his music sometimes it sounds very larger than life so i think that the u67 is the perfect camera to capture the picture which is his voice so i like that a lot and it sounds great on a bunch of other instruments like piano etc things that have a lot of sustain you know really helps bring out those notes so when it comes to modern vocals we got to always understand like the vintage components that you're using for example like if i want something like the weekend style i want something that's clear that's very mid-range focus something that's really forward so the vocal just feels like oh my god like he's really talking to me in real life and when you do something like that it just helps the listener just feel like the message is coming off across a little bit more it helps them you know digest um you know the topic of the song so i would use something like specifically i don't know if that's an api preamp but me personally for the weekend's voice i would use the api 512c and whitney houston was somebody who used the api 512c on some of her later albums in the late 80s so i definitely know that whitney houston she used to really dig into those notes and really be soulful and i think somebody like the weekend would benefit a lot from that so the api is one of those um you know type of uh, hardware units just pretty much the preamp the everything like that it came later down the lines where you know that ssl was starting to come through with the solid state components and that's the thing about the neve you know the way the neve kind of sounds the way it has transistors and transformers is very creamy but i feel like for a modern modern day r&b song you kind of want something that's very direct and very like a little bit more crisp a little bit a little bit more accurate and focused and that's what the api 512 c does so with this usually with the api it's very good for rap vocals rap vocals can help you get it very aggressive but usually the sweet spot is somewhere on that um you know that first or second orange line so people used to manually ride the gain as the artist was singing and even myself as an engineer i do that to this day you know where i tell the person all right 
you know, go ahead and wrap it for me. I might not even tell them, but I'm actually like setting the preamp level and the compressor level and everything like that on them just to make sure that I get like a scratch vocal to kind of see like, okay, this is where, um, you know, the rough idea for the song is going to be at. So that's something that the Apollo Twin lets you do as well. And we're going to look into our vocal chain. So the next thing that I saw with The Weeknd when he was up inside the studio is it looks like um, maybe not this picture, but I think it's the next one. I saw him in the studio with like an 1176 right here. So this is the 1178. So pretty much that's like a stereo um, version of the 1176, which is very interesting. A lot of people like to use that for bass, guitars, you know, uh, parallel compression on the whole drum room, the drum kit, make it pump. And I just love the 1178 because it's one of those things that I see a lot of the uh, throwback uh, pros use, but it's those FET components that really just help make an evo a vocal um, sound very aggressive, sound very upfront, and it helps give that proximity a little bit, you know, it kind of just really just helps the nuances come out. And that's what you want to do with somebody who's, you know, a singer, you know, those little huffs and puffs and and pa and those little bursts of energy is very important because that helps give the vocal more energy than what's there. So somebody like The Weeknd, he could be very smooth with his vocal tape, but that 1176 is just, uh, 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 you know, it's just tugging and pushing forward. Let's look at our um, Apollo chain, which I'm going to give you all the free link to down below. So if you wanted to emulate this chain, you could use something like the Townsend microphone and model the uh, U67. So I just love how the, the Townsend uh, lab spirit, I have a couple people who told me that, you know, they have it and they really love it a lot. It's just very versatile. You know, if I was running a studio personally myself, I work in a studio, but I don't run one. But if I did run one, I probably would have this microphone just because all of the different types of people that are coming through they can get you know the a, a sound that's going to be appropriate for themselves you know when you're recording and mixing for people it's kind of like you're a barber you got to custom tailor the haircut for everybody you know the same brush cut that worked for the other person that's coming in right now that's not that might not work for the other person so you need something that's going to adapt and conform to the strengths and the weaknesses of the artist so after that we would have something like the api uh, preamp this is the 512 and it's really that um op amp from the api that gives it its distinct sound and i feel like uh you UAD they really captured it very well this one is very versatile when it comes to mixing as well as um, tracking as well so you can get really aggressive with that mic pre but here we're using something very subtle and I you know it just has a certain way that it distorts it gives a nice little fuzz a nice little shimmer and another trick that I like to do if you want to get that to Tory Lanez reverb what I've been doing lately personally I take that API 20 um, the API preamp and I put it before my reverb and I crank up the mic pre a little bit to get some distortion so the signals distorting before it hits the reverb and it gets that hairy reverb so you know that reverb that kind of has that fuzz and that little tail makes it feel more tangible so i'm going to be doing a video about tory lane's vocal very soon i think the api is amazing the way it kind of distorts and the way it breaks up we would have the 1176 sc i think the 1176 sc is really beneficial in a tracking situation because it doesn't tie your hands behind your back you know it's very clean you know this one does not model the input and the output stage it's just only giving you the compression the compression circuit so that can be very useful when you know you're recording somebody and you don't know for sure yet what type of sound you're really trying to go for you're not trying to commit the whole way yet usually I would tell people to you know you should probably commit with the sound just to capture the vibe because that's what being a producer is you know all you're doing is capturing the vibe in the moment how everybody's feeling in the room you got to take that and put it into the music so the next day when the person hears the song they'd be like damn yeah I remember that experience you know pretty much that's what we're doing here here as producers as engineers we're creating experiences and then we're repackaging it and giving it to the world so that they can access it you know um forever pretty much and then you know the next thing that i would use is something like the um uad um pull tech eqp 1a and we're also going to look at the hardware version but here's here specifically i would do a little bit of smiley face eq so with the low frequency it's a low shelf essentially and with the top portion it's a bell so the a uh, the pull tech is very good for vocals because it just does some very broad moves it covers a lot of ground it really just is going to be bringing in a lot of um, a lot of body to somebody's vocal like the weekend and usually sometimes when people sing 
are singing higher notes, sometimes, you know, they can't generate low end energy from their voice, which makes a lot of sense. I don't know who can sing a really high note and be very deep and powerful at the same time. That's a very rare, very talented singer. Pull tech is very beneficial because some of that tube sound is going to help contribute to giving a little bit of that beef. So not only do you get the high notes from the weekend, you get some of that good high note from the R&B singer, but you're getting a little bit of body, a little bit of solidity. And that's very important, you know, when it comes to R&B nowadays, because R&B B, I feel like it's going in a direction where it's kind of like a hybrid between rap and R&B. It's not like the R&B in the 2000s where Tyrese and all of that stuff like that. Um, it's starting to get to a situation where it's kind of like the line is getting blurred between rap music and R&B. It makes me think of somebody like Bryson Tiller, even Tory Lanez. It's a nice fusion. So, you know, usually that means that the kicks are starting to hit a lot harder. The 808 is starting to hit a lot harder. There's a lot more reverb. So you still want that vocal to cut through and add in a little bit of that low end weight is what's going to help it become very powerful, really anchor the mix down and, you know, be the driving force for the whole song. So after that, I would do a little bit of boost on the top end. And, you know, something about the pull tech, you can crank it really hard, even the plug in, but especially the hardware where it doesn't sound um, tiring. It doesn't sound too invasive. It doesn't sound, you know, irritating with the high end. It just has a magical way of doing a very, uh, you know, gentle type of EQ boost. So that's one of the few EQs in the box that I do like to use is a pull tech just because it, it has a very gentle way of doing it. It's not too direct and too focused sometimes when you're doing too focused eq you can start really boosting up some of the bad frequencies it can get irritating and people may not realize that they're being uh you know tired of the song but they're just going to get an unpleasant feeling in them once it's all that brash high end so the pull tech is really good for that so the pull tech you know very beautiful this is another one of those units as well like look at those tubes it's going to take at least 30 minutes to an hour for those tubes to heat up and you know a lot of the times people they don't really say anything like that because you know if you own a studio it's nothing to come before the person but if you have a home studio you know just specifically hardware in general that if you got a home studio sometimes you coming back home from work see this is what a lot of people can relate to sometimes you you coming back home from work maybe you don't have enough time to sit there and wait for a whole hour for the um you know whatever tube microphone or pull tech to warm up for you to record sometimes you need something that's going to record right now so that's why i always try to tell you i gotta um you know think about these things before you buy it because you know four thousand dollars that's a lot of money especially in these times that's like a used car low-key so uh, you should be very smart about that last thing here that we're just going to mention today is the ams we've also included this inside of the free template so you guys don't forget to grab the free template you know maybe you can demo a couple of the plugins you know try it out you know if you want to do some melodic vocals but the beautiful thing about this is that it was one of those digital delays and reverbs that it's a hybrid situation because it lets you do reverb and delay as well very interesting very interesting and dr dre was a guy he loved using this one a lot you know so we're very familiar with the sound when you know if you play around with this the, the sound of this reverb you will recognize it the way it saturates the way it breaks up is very good i feel like for especially hip-hop music and uh, r&b music because it has like this grunginess to it a little bit and you have all of these incredible presets from uh you know the original and as well as uad i believe they added a couple of more as well so you know i'm not going to really speak about this one today i just wanted to show you guys that this was also a part of the weekend's chain inside of his studio uh, right there you can see with the distinguishing little you know the, the dial pad there it is and another thing i wanted to talk about too was the fact that he was using avid hdios that's something very important to know as well the type of interface that they're using to plug up all the gear avid hdios usually you know a lot of the times people um who are making that transition from analog to digital they always love this type of interface it just sounds great with the gear it gives them an accurate um you know kind of sound and, and sometimes you know people have gear and the interface that they have, the, the, the preamp they're plugging it into, sometimes the, it can have a little bit of coloration to it. So that's why people are always like big on converters and stuff like that. But we'll talk about that in another day. I just want to give a little brief overview of this chain that I created here for you guys today that's free. Um, so I just want to say thanks a lot for being a great part of my YouTube family. If you guys do have any more suggestions for any different types of content or artists, chains you want to see down below, go ahead and drop it. I just want to say thanks a lot. Appreciate you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.